What is going on YouTube? Jay here from AMJ Tech. Today coming with the brand new Yumi DG A11 budget phone that this company was nice enough to send me. This one has features that really caught my eyes and I think it will catch your eyes as well. And I think this is a very nice approach by this company because as we know, the market is flooded with a lot of budget phones, guys. And that's just the reality. So of course they had to stand out. So the first thing they did is that they rearrange their boxes. Now the Yumi DG logo is a little different. You have a yellow box and basically the information is on the back side of the box here. This is again the Yumi DG A11. It comes with a Helio G25 processor, nothing very special there, but it does have Android 11 and for a budget phone, that's kind of rare to see. Normally they come with Android 10. This model here comes in two variants. We get the three gigabytes of RAM and 64. This one, it is also available with four gigabytes of RAM and 128, which is the one inside of this box. And it comes in two different colors. We get the blue color and the gray color. I got the gray inside. It supports dual SIM and of course a TF card up to one terabyte. We have a massive battery of 5,150. It has a 6.53 inch display, 720p with about 291 PPI LCD panel as well. We get a three camera setup on the back, a 16 regular sensor, an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel macro lens together with an 8 megapixel front facing camera. Then of course we get here the LTE bands, but now the special part about this phone is yet to be known. So inside here you guys can see that I took already that plastic wrapper. So it comes with a protector as you can tell, which is always appreciated since these phones are kind of rare here in the USA. So it comes with this little case right here, silicon case. You can get another one. I believe they're available on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken. On the back side here, we can see we have a very nice uh, finish here. This is glass, by the way, and it has like a glaze uh, feel to it. It's like a, like a raspy feel, but at the same time, it's soft. Then here we can see the Beyond Dreams. A lot of people like this. Some people don't, that's okay. We get here the Yumi DG logo as well. And on the back side here is where everything starts becoming, I would say a little bit different. So we have the three camera setup. Okay, we get the LED light right there, but check this out guys. We have a built-in thermometer. Yes, it has an infrared thermometer and it could take your uh, skin temperature or body temperature and also surface temperature. Ain't that cool. And again, this is something that you don't see on every budget phone out there, at least in 2021 so far, and this one has it. And I'm talking about this phone, it's about $100, so keep that in your mind, guys. On the side here, we have the volume rockers up and down together with the power key, and this is also a fingerprint scanner. Towards the bottom side of the device, we get the microphone, USB-C with the loudspeaker. It is only a single speaker device. On the left-hand side here, which is another feature that again you don't see on every budget phone this is a dedicated shortcut key so you can program it or remap it if you want to call it that way to any other application that you wish to have so in this case for example I have one press opens TikTok a double press opens the camera and there's another one but I kind of forgot I believe if you're holding press it it opens another application so you can do about three and here we have the sim tray now on top this is a feature that, well, has vanished from most smartphones, especially the ones coming out in 2021, and it has to do with a 3.5mm headphone jack. This one still has it. On the front here, we have the display that I already mentioned with a 720p resolution, and the water drop notch on the top here that is carrying that 8 megapixel sensor. So we do have also an ear speaker, very tiny, right above the camera, and it comes pre-installed already with a screen protector so there we have it for the phone inside of the box here we have the manuals okay it comes with a little semi ejector tool the manuals and that's about it we get the regular wall charger now there's a little issue with this or a little complaint is that well we have a massive battery and this is just a standard charger it takes a long time to charge this device it takes roughly about almost two hours so coming from fast charging phones, that's a little bit slow. So here we have the USB-C cable and I've used it, of course, to test the device. And that's all we get inside. 
Now, in my opinion, another cool feature or something that I just found out about the Yumi DG A11 is that they are claiming that this is not a phone compatible with Verizon. Well, guess what, guys? I just popped in my Verizon SIM card and the phone supported Verizon. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why, but it does support Verizon. So I'm assuming that maybe it has to do because of the LTE bands are supported. By the way, this is not a 5G device and it comes with uh, almost a stock Android 11. So here we have the display and you can tell that the colors, even though this is not an AMOLED or an OLED display, it does look quite cool. And right there you can see already that it has read my Verizon SIM card right here, guys. A lot of people always comment and ask me if there's any phones that work with Verizon. Well, here you have it. So let's go ahead and of course unlock this. So we just started the phone. Let's enter my code. And so the first thing I want to test here, I have registered my face, but let me see if it does work quite fast right now. I have the camera in front of me. There you go. You can see that it didn't lock. It takes a moment. There we go. You can see that's because again, I have the camera in front of it, but it does work quite well. And of course here we have the fingerprint. So from being asleep, let's see how long it takes. It takes roughly about a second, second and a half approximately. Let's try the right thumb. You guys can see that it is about the same, but if I wake the device, it's actually a little bit faster. So if I press it, you can see that it's actually a little bit faster, but if I just put my finger on it without pressing it, it takes a little bit longer, but it doesn't fail guys. So far, I would say out of every 20 tries, maybe it fails one because it was my mistake and that's about it. So again, here we have that water drop notch on the top and you can see right there, the ear speaker, we have the camera and right above it, we have the ear speaker right there. And so this phone, the only little downside is that, well, they did a pretty good job keeping it almost bezel-less, except for the bottom here, we have a big chin. So this is the operating system. And so something they did, I don't know why they do this by default, is that if you go here into, you hold and press any empty corner, you go into home settings and you go into launcher style, they had it on home screen. So what this does is that it doesn't give you the app drawer. As you guys can tell, you can swipe up and it doesn't give it to you. So again, if you hold and press here, you go to home settings, you go to launcher and change it to default. Now we have an app drawer on here. So one of the first things I did just for reference purposes is that I went to Antutu Benchmark. I downloaded this directly from the browser and I perform a test. Now, this is just something that I do as a reference. It doesn't mean the phone sucks but this score, it does a little, 90,000. And right now, flagships are scoring almost 700,000 approximately. So this is a low score. This phone is mainly meant for phone calls, web browsing, maybe some basic game playing, but nothing hardcore. This is definitely not a phone for that. If you're looking for something to play games all the time and to just have it to where you want to max it out and just do a lot of strong stuff with it, this is not a phone for you. This is mainly a phone with a long battery that will last you the entire day if you're just surfing the web, making phone calls, and doing things like, you know, just simple things. So again, I have used this device now for the past couple of weeks. As a matter of fact, I do have here most of the applications that I use on a daily basis, and the phone is not disappointing whatsoever. I did perform here the Geekbench 5 benchmark as well, and this one also did I would say more towards the poor side. Let's go into history. So you can see right here, the single core 144 and the multi-core was 835. So nothing very special or nothing to brag about. But now here's the cool part about this device. We already tested the face recognition and the fingerprint, but check this out guys. If I double click here, it opens the camera. Look how quick this button is. If I single press it, it opens TikTok, okay? And if I hold it for a few seconds, let's see, it opens Amazon. Yes, of course, I like to shop a lot. So it opens Amazon. So as you can tell, you can program this if you go here into settings. Let's go ahead and check that out right now. And by the way, I have the dark mode activated. If you go here into display, you can do so by just clicking here, this little uh, toggle, just flick it to the side and it goes into dark mode. It's my uh, preferred method of uh, viewing phones. Otherwise I get a headache, 
but anyways here we have things like a smart key and so this is the one that you can remap so as you can tell for single click I have TikTok. you can change this to any other application as you can tell it could be the ones that you just downloaded and that's a pretty nice feature again for a phone that only costs this much we're talking about a hundred bucks guys and it's giving you four gigabytes of ram 128 gigs of internal storage and so on and so forth but now of course when it comes now to the gaming side this phone is just going to handle some basic gaming so for right now i am testing here beach buggy and yes it's going to run great because these games don't require heavy cpu usage and for that reason this being the g25 by mediatek well, that's exactly what it's going to do. It's just going to handle some basic games, nothing special. Don't even try it because you might be disappointed. I mean, it might do it, but it's just going to lag quite a bunch and it's not going to be anything enjoyable. Then we have here the camera. So the camera, like I said before, we have a 16 megapixel main shooter on the backside together with the ultra wide. By the way, we have this little toggle here. We click on it. It gives you that ultra wide a megapixel and then we have the macro lens so they all work as intended guys but the quality is not going to be at flagship level this is just going to do the job for basic pictures the macro lens does work but you have to tweak it a little bit and play with it until you get that perfect photo and then you just shoot it and you can see the logo here how big it looks now from this picture and i would say that's quite cool so again, everything works as described, but it's not going to be that quality that you guys might be uh, looking for. For example, like 4K recording, this doesn't have 4K recording. If you go here into videos, we go into settings, at the max that we can go, it's uh, 1080p quality. You can tell in this video that it looks a little bit shaky. I tried to hold it as steady as possible, but the video are not stable. It doesn't have electronic image stabilization, and it doesn't have optical image stabilization either. So here we have the front facing camera again just basic stuff 1080p and it does have wide angle as well you can do a picture here you can do video at 1080p like i said before you can do portrait as well very cool but again it is just a functional camera that will take basic photos now when it comes to the loudspeaker as i said before this is a single speaker so i'm going to be playing a gemini man clip here in 4k Well guys, there we have it for the sound quality coming into this device. And to be honest with you, it is not something impressive. It's just another, again, speaker, basic quality that will not give you stereo sound, of course, because we only have one functional at the bottom and that's pretty much it. But now when it comes here to the call quality, the phone does quite well thanks that we are here getting voice over LTE or also known as HD voice. And that is working properly. So when making phone calls, people thought I was just using the regular iPhone 12 Pro Max that I normally use and they didn't complain. But now when using the loudspeaker, they did complain that there was like background noise, a lot of background noise. So I would just say that use a Bluetooth device or use it regularly. Just bring the phone to your ear and you're going to have a much better experience. But other than that, the phone does perform quite well with phone calls. Another cool part here about the Yumi DG A11 is that it has somewhat, uh, I would say, pretty cool customizations. Like, for example, you can change your widgets here from the notification. And in this case, I added here screen record start in which you can just start recording your screen by just tapping on here. Very easy to do. If we go here into the task killer as well, we can take a screenshot. You can see the toggle right there at the bottom so you don't have to be pressing two buttons at the same time another cool feature here with the human dg a11 is that if you hold and press your the volume rockers up and down it will call the emergency services you have to enable this on settings i believe i saw it on here i'm not 100 percent sure but let's go here into where it says smart assist and let's go into emergency rescue you can see it right there guys 
So it says right here the instructions to use the emergency rescue during an emergency, please press and hold the volume up and down key for three seconds. It says it right there. So these are again features that do make a difference and I just love it guys. A budget phone, not really for gaming, not the best for camera, but it still is a functional phone with decent features. Okay, so now we have one more feature to test and that's going to be the infrared thermometer. I left this for last just because I had a lot of fun with it. And so this is one again, the features that I would say is one of the main highlights of this device versus the competition out there. So let's go ahead and open this application called thermometer. And this is my last reading and it's best for just reading like your skin, stuff like that. Um, so right now we have it on people here. So what we got to do is just place that sensor, just put it on your skin like so and click on measure. And that's my temperature guys, 96.6 according to the phone. Now we know that COVID is still running around, especially with that Delta variant. So this is a good way to measure your temperature with your own device and not having to worry about getting a thermometer. You know, this is in case you want to use this on a daily basis. This is very cool. You can't deny it. It's a very cool phone for about a hundred dollars, guys. So with this being said, let me know down below what you think about the Yumi DG A11. Will you give it a try? Will you pass on it? And let me know if there's anything else that you would like me to test. With this being said, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Click on the bell icon and I will see you guys on my next one.